Hi, I'm thrilled to be joined by Josh Burke, who's the CFO of GoPuff, which is an incredibly innovative, I'm not sure if you call it a startup, how big you guys have gotten. Josh, can you tell me the founding story of GoPuff? The founders, they're first generation Americans and their families were entrepreneurs. And so they, from their, from their childhood, they really threw themselves into the family business. Um, they met in college at Drexel and they, they realized there was a, a need uh, for this immediate needs, the convenience stores weren't convenient, uh, and, that, and that there was an opportunity to start a company here and fulfill a need for, for uh, their fellow college students. So they actually started by uh, flipping furniture on Craigslist and eBay uh, for about a $50,000 profit, which was the seed money to jumpstart this immediate needs category. Uh, and, and really it was a rocket ship from there. And so starting from late night snacks, they added alcohol, they've added pet, they've added beauty. We've even added COVID-19, FDA approved COVID-19 tests will deliver to you in 30 minutes or less. So the, 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 really the company has exploded uh, from a growth perspective and from a, how dynamic it is. And so you look at today, we're seven years into this thing. We're growing from 100 SKUs to 3,000 SKUs uh, and we're just getting started. So. Uh, frankly, you know, you're Kieran Raff's passion for the business, big part of why I joined. And, you know, it, it helps as a CFO to have co-founders that are sort of, you know, financially minded from the beginning. So it, it sets a good tone throughout the organization. One of the themes that we're talking about in this interview series is big moves. And, and one of those big moves categories is M&A, which we want to talk to you about today. The BevMo acquisition, large liquor distribution company entity, what made that the right fit for GoPuff right now? It's a transformational acquisition for us. Uh, really what it did, John, is it accelerated three years of strategic investment. Now it's all behind us and now we can execute. So we're basically taking BevMo, uh, which has 161 uh, stores in, across Washington, California, Oregon, and Arizona. And we're gonna use that as a platform to launch our tech platform on it. So we're gonna be able to provide GoPuff as a delivery solution to many BevMo customers and provide everything they might need in addition to, the, to, their, uh, to their alcohol. So we're, we're basically taking some of their uh, competencies, which is their, their retail expertise. It's gonna be their, their customer base and it's gonna be um, their assortment. And we're combining it with our tech platform in a really compelling way. And I'm actually very proud of the team. We did our first California shipment yesterday. Uh, so we, uh, we delivered it um, and it's it, obviously we, from five weeks from close to shipment, we move pretty fast here at GoPuff. And owning the whole supply chain, everything from inventory to delivery is a hallmark of the company and something that's very important to you guys. Why, why is that? It really comes down to a few things. One, uh, we really want to control the experience. And what that means is that we actually ha own the fulfillment experience. We have the fulfillment centers uh, and we actually take possession of the inventory before we resell it. So what that enables us to do is we can control the experience for the customer. Uh, that's how we can commit to delivery times um, and that's how we can, uh, we can control the uh, assortment too. We know what's available. So we've eliminated the middleman. So a lot of delivery services will have a third party that will actually shop the third party merchant. And so they can't control things like product availability. So what we've done from the bottoms up, we've built tech uh, investments to really ensure that we have great visibility into what's in our supply chain and that enables us to, to create uh, a great experience for the customer. It also enables our unit economics to work because we make margin on the sale of the goods. Uh, so it's not just a transaction fee business, we actually make margin on what we do. You touched on this a little bit, that rapid delivery time. You deliver products or aim to deliver products within 20 to 40 minutes from the time of order. How do you do that? How do you limit the geographies of the particular delivery zones? Do you use bikes, do you use cars? How does 20 to 40 minutes happen? Today we use cars. Uh, we, we, we basically have a lot of tech that we've invested into uh, everything from uh, automating our, our, our picking and our packing, our routing. Uh, we've made investments in our own uh, in-house labor management system and warehouse system to make sure that we can um, customize a, a technology for our needs because there just wasn't anything off the shelf for immediate needs for that industry. So we've really customized it with world-class technology team uh, to enable that. And so um, we go into a market, we're very deliberate about how we go into markets and how we build around uh, that, you know, with that infrastructure. And we've got a great go-to-market team and then we invest in the technology to enable the, the very fast delivery times. What, what's next for the finance team? Uh, I, I assume that there's still integration work to be done with BevMo, but you know, including that and beyond, what's next on your radar? For starters, I think having a world-class finance and accounting team is going to be critical to our hyper growth. 
Uh, I'm very proud of the finance and accounting team that's gotten us to where we are. And like I tell them, the reinforcements are coming. We're bringing in some great talent to buttress them a bit and, and, uh, and get after it. Uh, so, you know, the finance and accounting team really focusing on helping us make better decisions, uh, really helping us uh, refine our business model. I'm very confident uh, in my team. Uh, I'm very confident with, you know, we've, we've made a lot, we have a great partner in Oracle that's helped us with an ERP that's gonna be helpful, uh, but I'm very confident that we'll be able to execute uh, on this integration. Let, let's talk about ERP for a second. The company, like so many, started on QuickBooks, and now you've moved to a cloud-based ERP solution. And tell me about the, the work involved in doing that and what it's meant for the business. I think first off, it's a big decision anytime a company goes with an ERP. I think you know, it's really gonna be you know, on the company to figure out when that time is right. Uh, for us, it was really important. We wanted to have a really strong backend infrastructure uh, and we wanted a solution that was gonna connect us end to end, so both front end and back end. We wanted to be able to make really good decisions with our data. And so the cloud-based ERP solution that Oracle offered was the right decision for us. Um, you know, from, from a cloud versus on-premise, I think for us, cloud made sense. We, you know, as a technology company, we wanna make sure that our, our world-class technology engineers are focused on uh, delivering great enhancements to the customer experience. And having a cloud-based solution really enables us to leverage Oracle, the pros, at making sure that the system stays up, make sure it's operating effectively, and enables me uh, to, to make sure that our technology team is focused on driving customer enhancements. So, you know, when patches, improvements, and things come out, uh, you know, Oracle can help push that and manage it for us, which makes our lives much easier. Had, had you worked on non-cloud-based systems in the past, and are, are there specific benefits to the cloud-based approach of Oracle ERP that makes it even more facile than things you've done before? Coming from my background in Under Armour and, and Backcountry, we had uh, ver a variety of different ERP solutions over, over the last 15 years of, of me being in finance and accounting. I would say that you know, it really comes down to me of a cloud-based solution enables us to be far more nimble and to focus the technology resources on what matters most to us and not have a bunch of technology engineering resources on just maintenance and, and managing the ERP. So that's been an unlock for us. As you do scenario planning and you think about how you want to get from point A to point B, and at the same time what we've seen in the past year, adjusting to COVID, adjusting to the pandemic, changes that get thrown in our ways, what is your scenario planning strategy so that you're able to be ready for the next BevMo or the next thing that you want to do? Like you said, John, there's been a ton of change in the last 18 months, and the next 18 months will be even more change, a lot of uncertainty. Um, you know, and planning for that's difficult. You know, we're really excited to use the scenario modeling with that, that Oracle's solution offers us. It enables us to uh, really plan for, for, for positive outcomes or negative outcomes and be able to pivot very quickly. Um, and so that's obviously a huge help for us. We're also bringing two very, you know, very large entities together with disparate systems. And so there's, you know, enterprise data management that, that Oracle offers that'll help us really bring those things together. And then, and then, you know, the last piece is really how do we think about integrating the back end? I think that's something that's in our future as we think about Oracle and, and maybe, and, and it being a solution for us across our entire entity. So Oracle will be at the center of what we're thinking about in terms of future acquisitions for sure. Any hints for what's next, whether it's more acquisitions like BevMo, more rollout to eventually achieve national footprint? I assume that that would be the goal. Can you give us any hints as to what's next on the horizon? It's going to be, look, more product expansion. Uh, this business model, we're going from 100 SKUs to 3,000 SKUs. We've shown that we can continue to stretch. I think we're going to go, you know, one of the parts of our business model is, is really partnering with local businesses and, and, and whether it's the federal donuts in Philadelphia or the king of pops in Atlanta, we, we enable local businesses to really connect with their consumers. So we're continuing to look for new local f favorites that we can bring into the family that we can really amplify their business. We're going to continue to aggressively expand geographies. Uh, we're going to bring the great GoPuff solutions to California customers. I mean, we're just getting started, John. Thank you for the time, Josh. We'll be in touch.